Well, so now what we're going to do is now that I've got the uh, the cup on the on the scale, I'm going to go ahead and scoop out some silicone. I've got this open right here, so I'm just going to do it like this with my uh, trusty stir stick. It's this can be a learning experience pouring silicone because it's so gooey, uh, but you can actually transfer quite a bit of silicone by just spinning it on the stick and then scraping it down into it. Um, so what I'm going to do is just continue to do this until I have what I think will be a good first layer. Um, and I need a little bit more. Okay. I think that'll make enough for a good first layer. Since I had this off of there long enough now, I'm going to have to reset it. So, um, so I've got my Part B activator ready. Okay, just a second. I'm resetting my scale at zero with this cup here. My scale, for some reason, if I don't use it for a few minutes, it tends to want to shut off on me. So, okay, great. All right. So I have 347 grams, right? So I need to add 34 to 347. So 47, 57, 67, 77, uh, 38, 9, 88, 1. So 381, is that right? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good to me. Okay, so 381 grams is what it'll total. Actually, I'm going to shake this first a little bit. You should shake this anyway. You don't have to shake the silicone, but the, the activator you do need to shake. So, container in the world. Wow, what a mess. This is like a bad Julia Child moment. Okay. Hey. So now I just take the material and see I've got the, the pink catalyst inside there and I'm going to want to mix that together. So the idea is you want to scrape the sides as best you can, getting all the way down there and scrape using the, the thing. And with these clear cups, the cool thing about it is you really can see when you've done a good job and when you when you have it you'll see little white stripes so you just want to keep on mixing it until you have a really nice blend of the two materials should be a nice pink color and uh, of course you'll get some of these silicones that are blue and even clear but I prefer the silicones that have a colored pigment because I don't like to guess whether or not it's mixed <laughs> and the clear pigments you can't tell it's really hard to see whether or not you've got a really good mix. So there's several different kinds of silicone that you can buy. I mentioned it before. Uh, Platinum-based silicone, which is really good stuff, and also the tin-based silicones. The platinums tend to be a little bit more expensive. Um, and there's variations in the, the how long that they or how well they stretch, how long they last, the the speed in which they begin to cure. There's just a, a gob of variations from one to another. So uh, when, when, you're, when you're choosing the silicone that you want to use, or you're going to use, it's really important that first you make sure it's not going to react with your clay. And that's the number one thing. And second, that the material isn't going to take forever to cure. Because you don't want to sit here, pour it on, and then have to continually pour it on and and pull it back up over the piece and have it drain back down again, pull it back up. So it's nice to have a, a silicone that 
will start to cure within about 20 minutes. Um, this particular silicone has a curative in it that speeds it up a little bit, so I don't have to wait for it to go through the long process of curing. So here I've got it mixed fairly well. I see a few, few stripes in here, so I want to get those off of there. And you can see there how that looks. Should be nice and blended. Now, in a professional studio, they would likely vacuum this and pull out all the little teeny micro air bubbles. But because this is just a simple, basic mold for hobbyists or somebody that's getting into the trade, it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. We're going to brush this material onto this piece. So we're going to be making sure we don't get any air bubbles on the surface by using our brush. And also, we don't want it to be so thick that we can't see the surface through the silicone on the first layer. It's really important on the first layer also that as you're pouring it, as I'm doing right now, is you let, you let it pour out of the cup in a way that it breaks air bubbles. And you can see right there, air bubbles breaking as it pours out. Pour onto the high points first and let the high points uh, use gravity to let that silicone pour down along the sides of the sculpture. So I'm going to pour this on pretty liberally here and I'm going to let it travel over the surface of the sculpture. But I'm also going to make sure using my brush that we're getting nice coverage and I don't have any sneaky annoying air bubbles at the end. So I'm going to Pause that there. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to go ahead and grab my brush. I'm going to let that travel over the surface a little bit. And I'm going to start painting it into the detail. Areas where you're going to see a lot of bubbles on sculptures are like those kind of divots, like inside the ear, around the, uh, the outside. Of the, uh, of the piece where you have the, uh, the separation and the seam line. So you want to make sure that all the detail has been brushed. And inside the eye socket here, gently pushing because if your clay is soft enough you'll actually see little... Uh, you don't want to damage the surface of your sculpture because it, it'll take a mold of it and then you'll see it on your finished piece. So being as gentle as you can using the soft brush to get the details is really what we want to do here. And we really want to push the silicone. You don't want to force it so much as you just want to kind of guide it into areas that you want it to be to make sure you get this first coat nice and just a quality first coat. Just kind of uh, shoving that silicone and let it do its thing. It's going to keep on moving. And I have a little extra in my cup, so any areas that are coming out a little thin, I can, I can add some. The nostrils. Make sure you really focus a lot of attention on your seam line. By just gently pushing in there, it breaks air bubbles. You actually hear the little snapping of the air bubbles as you're doing that. You hear that? That's well, air trapped in there that you want to break those air bubbles and get them out of there. And you definitely want to try not to get this stuff on your skin. It's just really tacky and gross and uh, you really can't use any solvents to clean it off. You have to kind of wipe it off and then let it slowly wear off your skin. So it's really annoying if you get it on your skin. So I would definitely be careful with that. I continually do it, so <laughs> this is kind of old. There we go. So again, make sure you cover the, the whole surface of the piece. Getting, I know I'm missing something on that side because I'm looking from this angle. So We're not really going for thickness on this first layer. We really are just going for coverage. 
the most important thing we can do right now is just make sure that the whole piece is well covered. Okay. Okay, I'm going to put the rest of it on here and I'm going to let it go down and move around. Stuff is curing up nice and quick, so that's good. I don't have to wait around for it. Okay, so I'm going to put this over the top, the remaining material. I want to get everything out of the cup that I can, and I'll go ahead and brush this over the whole surface and make sure that I get as even a, a layer as I can. And then uh, we're probably going to have to do this same process two or three times. So you want to make sure it gets cured before you add the next layer. You can do it when it starts getting tacky, but you don't want to do it initially until it gets to that point when you start adding that second layer. My guess is that this is going to be about three layers, possibly four layers to cover the whole piece really well. So that's it. I'll uh, brush that on there and we'll see you later on in the process. Okay, so what we've got is uh, the first layer completed, and it's not too tacky, so I can go ahead and put the next layer on. I think it took about 45 minutes to get to this point, um, so I'm going to go ahead and pour this on here. Like again, right up on the center and hitting those high spots and then letting gravity pull itself down over the piece is the best way. This is a fairly thick layer, so I'm going to really want to make sure I stay on top of this and not let it settle into the low spots. So I get, if it does cure like that, then I'll have really thick low spots and really thin high spots, and I don't want that. I want it to be consistent. I want this piece to be, uh, to be a nice quarter or one third inch thickness all over consistently. So just keeping an eye on it and making sure you're watching it, it's real important. Uh, for the first 10 minutes or 20 minutes or so, you just want to make sure you keep it, just keep checking it and seeing if it's at a point where the material will actually stick on there and stay without you having to constantly paint it back up over the high spots. That's a pain and it takes a while. But you can go ahead and just get it in there, have it touch the entire surface of the piece. And then if you want, you can wait a few minutes until you notice that it is starting to get tackier and it's not flowing as much. And at that time, you start building up the thickness on the high spots. But again, just always trying to make sure you don't let things get too thick anywhere. Um, so we just want it to be consistent. And so, like I said, right now, it's just going to keep on falling. So I'm going to wait a couple of minutes. I'm going to come back to it and see where it's at. And just don't let too much time get away from you. Because if you do, you'll come back and it's solid. And you've only got an eighth of an inch or less of rubber on the high spots. And then you've got two inches thick rubber on the low spots. And you don't want that. So we'll go ahead and pause here and come back in a little while.
Okay, well now we've had a chance to go through and add the layers of uh, silicone to this piece. It took three layers to create a quarter inch or so thickness. Uh, anything less than a quarter of an inch is too thin. So I think that this is slightly above that and I'm feeling pretty good about it. So we're going to go ahead and start the shell process on this first side. Uh, so you can see how that works. And, but before we do that, I wanted to go ahead and show you a couple of things you're going to need for that. Uh, first, you're going to need disposable gloves. Um, that's what I have here. Uh, but you can use rubber gloves too. I just, my hands don't fit into the smaller rubber gloves, so uh, I use these. And also, uh, some kind of a dust mask. Uh, you can use the little cotton ones, whatever. just keeps the, the, uh, the powder from going up your nose and breathing that in. It's not good for you. And then I also have uh, hemp cloth. And that's what this is here, or terry cloth, I guess you could call it. Uh, I get this at the garden center in, at Home Depot or Lowe's. Uh, and it works really well for this kind of application. You don't need more than a roll of this to do uh, a mold. In fact, that's overkill. You'll have a lot left over. So you need your pair of scissors. And, uh, and then also you're going to need a, a, a casting powder. And I've chosen Hydrocal White. And that's something you can also get at uh, most ceramic supply stores or uh, places that like uh, Smooth On. And there's a lot of different companies that sell this product. But Hydrocal White is good, and there's Ultracal as well. Um, several different uh, brands of powder. You can also use pottery plaster. And really, what we're doing is just creating a shell to support this silicone rubber. Uh, and we're going to do it a mixture of the hemp cloth and the hydrocal. So initially I've got this little mixing bowl here. I like the, these plastic mixing bowls because they're flexible. So when I'm mixing up my material and it starts to cure, I can crack it and get the old material out of it to clean it. It comes out usually really clean. I can use it again and again. So I've gone ahead and put in this container about a half inch of water. Uh, the ratio for mixing hydrocal is you just want to make sure that the hydrocal is like fluffy, fluffy peanut butter or fluffy uh, toothpaste. That's about where you want it, uh, to where it's not dripping, but it, and it stays and keeps its form. And you, when you scoop it out in your hand, and I'll go ahead and show you what that's like here, and, and we'll just go ahead and cut right into this bowl so you can see what we're doing. Okay, so now we we have a little bit closer angle on the sculpture and a little bit closer angle on the bowl here so you can kind of get an idea of how much uh, material I'm going to put in this to mix it up. This is a, a by feel game so I don't I don't ever mix it by ratio. Uh, you might want to if they tell you that you know but I just don't think it's necessary. Completely your choice though and your call and also you'll notice I'm doing this barehanded. It's only because I can't stand wearing the gloves and I've been doing this a long time but you may not like that and uh, for me, it's just a matter of uh, my hands get to make it a little dry, but I throw some lotion on there. So I just I prefer to feel the, the material, but that's a personal thing. So I'm going to go ahead and start scooping the material in there. And what I usually do is go to a point to where there's like a little volcano, I guess, right in the top of it. Um, maybe a little bit more than that. We're just doing a first coat on this one. So, there we go. I think that's going to be pretty close to enough material. If, I, if there's not enough, then I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and add more. And I come in and I, I just swoosh the liquid through the powder, but I also take my fingers and I, uh, I'm going to use a little bit more water in that mix. I think I'm a little shy on water here. So, basically what I'm trying to get to is a nice fluffy consistency here. So I'm going to keep on going. You can kind of see inside here what I'm doing. And I'm squishing the little balls of plaster between my fingers there uh, until I have a smooth mix. And I'm no longer worried about the uh, unmixed material. I'm not adding the hemp on this first layer. I'm just going to put the material on there first, and then I'm going to 
the second layer of material all out, go ahead and add a hemp. And this will probably only take two layers to finish. So that's feeling pretty good. You can see when I hold it up in my hands like this, I'm not getting any drips. You can see it kind of keeps its shape. Uh, if I squeeze it out, that's the kind of consistency you want right there. Looks good. So now I just want to kind of get it into my mold here. And I'm dropping it down to the low pot spots first, and then I'm going to build upward. The reason I do that is because the it's thick enough where it'll create a little bit of support for the upper stuff. So by doing the bottom part first, it'll help me to finish the shell up. And I also want to make sure I'm dipping my fingers in there and getting all the air bubbles out on the inside of the shell. Okay. Like I said, because this is just a first coat, I'm not really uh, worried too much about thickness. Just enough to, uh, to cover it. It's going to take a minute and what will happen is it'll it'll start to cure and this stuff cures really quickly once it gets rolling. So you want to be there for that so you can do it, you can smooth it out a little bit. You don't want to smooth it out too much because you want the next layer to adhere to it. But just getting it so that it's not real messy is a good idea. And what I also do too is a little trick is uh, once I get it up on the piece, I'll just uh, whack it a little bit. It kind of smooths it out a little bit. That should be good enough for the first layer. And so we'll go ahead and prepare the next layer and we'll put some hemp in there too and show you how we, we, we do that. All right, we've gone ahead and got the first shell. It's, it's already uh, cured up enough to where we can start the next one. It doesn't have to be cured all the way, uh, but enough to where you can, you can start working on it again without mushing or damaging or cracking the first one you've done. And I've gone ahead and taken these slices of hemp that I've made and I dampened them. So I just got them wet and I strained them out. You want to get the water out of them, but you want them to be a little bit damp so that they'll adhere to the plaster. And I'm going to go ahead and start scooping the plaster into a new batch. Make sure you put your uh, breathing apparatus on. <laughs> All right, there we go. So mixing again. And if you feel like you've got a little bit too much powder in there, just add a little bit more water and you just want to get it to that same consistency again. So I'm going to think I'm a little dry, so I'm going to add a dab. Because I'm going to be dipping uh, cloth into this, I don't mind it being a little bit, a little bit wetter than the, the one we did before, because I want it to, uh, to really adhere to the, to the hemp cloth that we have. So we're only going to do a one layer coverage. The reason we're doing the hemp isn't so much for strength, it's that when you have the, the, the shell mold, if you were to drop it and it breaks, the hemp cloth would keep it together. Even though there might be a crack in it, you could still use the mold. It'd be functional instead of having multiple parts to try and piece back together. So, all right, I'm gonna add a little bit more water in that just so it will get into the cloth fibers. All right, so I'm gonna take some pieces of hemp. And actually, before I do that, I'm going to just throw a little layer 
of plaster onto the surface just so it gets a nice bond. All right, and then I'm just going to start covering the piece with the hemp like this and kind of rubbing it in so it gets a nice, it breaks the air bubbles on the surface and gets a nice uh, smooth add on there. I'll just keep dipping the next one in, lay it down, smoosh it around. There. I'm just doing right up the center first and then I'll do the edges after. You can hear those little pops and snaps. Those are air bubbles breaking on the surface. Alright. If I were to do this with just dry hemp, it would not uh, adhere very well. The, the uh, cloth would absorb the moisture out of it and it would get uh, all caked up. So having that little bit of moisture in the hemp really helps. Alright. So I've got, I think, pretty good coverage. I'm going to try a little bit more on these edges right here. to make sure there's no spot that doesn't have at least some hemp over it. And then what I like to do is a smoothing layer. <laughs> and then what I'd like to do is a smoothing layer over it. So I'm going to do this one last one. I think I've got all the hemp on that I'm going to need. And I've got a little extra plaster here. And I'm going to make it look nice with that extra plaster. So I'm going to throw it on there. And then I'll smooth it out as it cures. It should be a nice, pretty shell. It's going to be about a half inch to an inch thick on most places. There might be a little bit thicker on some, but it, I think for the most part it's going to be about a half inch to an inch thick on the shell. I like them a little bit thicker because uh, I don't mind that, but some people don't like have to heft a, a heavier shell. So, But I'd rather have it be heavier, thicker, and stronger than broken. Okay, in just a second, when this cures up a little bit more, I'll start to smooth it out. But for right now, I'm going to clean my hands off. All right. I let the plaster <clears throat> harden a little bit to where when you touch it, it's just uh, uh, soft and you can, you're able to smooth it out. And so I went ahead and smoothed it out. And so this is what we have. I cleaned up the edges a little bit. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this mold uh, over and then we're going to see all the, the wet clay that we had built before to hold the piece up and we're going to get rid of all that wet clay. I don't want to damage this form that I've made. So I've gone ahead and cut underneath here with this knife and separated this segment from the lower board segment. And I think it's pretty good. So now, I'm going to go ahead and flip it over. Okay, good, it came off. Alright, you see? I'm going to flip this over. Alright, so for now, going to be a little teeter-tottery until I get something to support that. It looks like I had a little crack or some something where a little bit of rubber ran through. That's why you want to make sure you have all the <laughs> material pressed along the walls. You're not supposed to see those little mistakes, but 
regardless it uh, is not that big a deal it just ran down along the inside of the paper so you want to really make sure you press the clay up against the paper as hard as you can so you don't have that happen um, so now I'm going to try and remove this excess clay from the inside here and sometimes it comes out easy and sometimes you have to kind of work it so if it turns out that it's just too wet and sticky sometimes you can just let it dry in here a little bit and then it'll come out a little bit easier because as it dries this wet clay will shrink and pull from the walls and stuff and uh, it makes it a little easier to to remove the clay from the inside but to kind of show you what I'm doing I'm just pulling out the chunks of clay from the inside get rid of that and This is going to take a few minutes, so I'm going to say goodbye to you for a second. I'm going to clean all this out of here, and I'll show you just before I get it finally cleaned when we come back. Thanks. Okay, we've gone ahead and got rid of all of the wet clay that was inside of the, 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 uh, this, this mold frame I've built here. You can see it's much cleaner now. I went through and used a little bit of water and I brushed out in the, in the cracks and crevices and got that wet clay out of there. And then I used a sponge and I wiped it all down. Did that a few minutes. It probably took me 10 minutes or 15 minutes to do that. Uh, but now it's nice and clean and it's dry. And so now I can, I can, I can prepare my mold release for it. So I'm gonna spray the mold release on and then I'm gonna build the what they call a sprue or the the opening where the the material is going to pour into the mold and although it may not make a lot of sense now but you'll see me adding clay to this segment that'll go back to this area right here and that's going to be the opening into the mold so that they can get materials in for for producing the piece so for right now i'm going to go ahead and spray the piece down and when you're spraying on mold release uh, you don't have to douse it, but you do have to touch the entire surface of the rubber. So you want to make sure that all of it has been uh, has been infused with mold release because the second layer or the layers of silicone we're going to add to this piece at this point will bond to it if you don't. So you really want to make sure you get every crack and crevice, every little bit on, on the surface of the silicone and make sure it's covered with mold release because you don't want to have these two pieces bonding together where you can't pull the mold apart to remove your original design. I'm going to go ahead and add the mold release to it and uh, when you're applying the mold release make sure you get in all the little cracks and crevices because whatever you don't touch with the mold release will bond to the next level or the next layers of silicone that you add. So um, I'm going to put my uh, trusty Ebola protection mask on <laughs> so I don't have to breathe in this nasty material uh, which means I have to take my glasses off and uh, I'll spray it down real fast but just Get in there and okay, we've gone ahead and sprayed it down. <laughs> Wait until that dissipates. Um, so we're pretty much ready to add the, the clay to the back end here. I'm going to be building that up, going up to this back wall. And uh, when we're done with that, then we'll start the next process of adding uh, silicone. So we'll see you in a minute.
Okay, we've gone ahead and we've uh, I've finished up the uh, the sprue section or this area right here where I've built this clay out. That'll that'll give us a nice channel for material to flow inside the piece uh, when we get going on that. But right now we're going to add our second layer of, or our first layer of rubber on the second side. I've taken some of that waste material or waste clay that we had from the molds and I've I've put it in the bottom. I'm trying to make it as level as I can so that when I'm pouring the silicone, it doesn't pool on one side of the mold or the other. I want it to be as evenly distributed as I can in the center of the, of the piece. So I've already mixed up a batch of silicone and I've already put on my mold release. Always make a checklist of the things you need to do. Mold release being the number one thing you need to do along with mixing your, your silicone up properly because you know, forgetting those two things could lead to real problems. So here I am, I'm pouring the silicone in there, starting on the high points again and letting it flow down. And uh, then I'm gonna take my brush and go through and make sure I'm not missing any air bubbles and push it into the cracks and crevices in the seam line. And this is pretty much the end of this segment of it because we're gonna just go ahead and flash through the next two layers, just like we did with the last side. And in the end, we'll have two sides finished and then we'll go ahead and plaster it up and we'll meet you back for this last segment where we can, uh, we can discuss separating the mold. Okay, I've gone ahead and uh, finished up the last pour of rubber and then I went ahead and put the shell on the same way we did in the last segment. Uh, so we have the shell on this side completed and the shell on this side completed with the rubber on both sides done. So now the fun part, we get to strip this thing down and pull the, uh, pull the piece out. I actually don't mind this part of the process because it means I'm pretty much done. <laughs> uh, so let me turn this around. You can see now that <clears throat> uh, how how it's all coming together, and th these are easy to pull apart. It's a lot easier than doing a lot of different kinds of molds. These ones just uh, separate right where your uh, mold release was. Just got to get this paper stuff off. I don't want to take too much time doing this. But. So I'm going to take one of the shells out, just like this. This will make it a little easier. Okay, this should be a lot easier. There we go. All right. So now we have one shell there. This is the back of the head. Okay, we've gone ahead and cleaned this up. Uh, and now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to separate it. The paper, some kinds can, can stick to the side of the uh, silicone, but it wasn't too bad. It came off quickly. Uh, so I'm going to take the shells off first, like that. The two shell halves. And I'm just going to find a place where it separates. I'll do this on the end. Be a good spot. There we go. So you can see the, the two halves coming apart there, just like that. I just walk it along the edge. You don't have to worry about your original anymore because now you have a functioning mold that will make you uh, able to, to go ahead and duplicate the piece. So 
this is out of here. <laughs> I will put this back here. Actually, you know what? I'll leave it on the table right over here. Okay, and then just a little bit of getting this uh, this wet clay out of there. That shouldn't take long. And I'll just quickly put it back together so you can see how the key locks work and my registration points. That should do for now. I'll clean that up later on. So when you're putting your, your piece back together, so just put this one on first, see how it fits in there really well. And just make sure it's uh, not binding anywhere and it's all on good. And then you can go ahead and fit on your second side and then just wiggle it around until it slides into its key locks. Those little dimples that we made, that's what those are for. The, the, they'll just lock them in place so that this thing won't jiggle and you'll have your seam lines will line up on the sides of the head. And then we have our completed mold. So there you go. I uh, hope you, you were able to learn something from this and that you enjoyed the process. Uh, and I hope that you really uh, enjoy having castings of your own work. Uh, so from uh, Renewing the Renaissance and the Beginner's School, uh, thank you for joining us and we'll see you around.